God isn't just our judge. He is our father. And we know this from scripture, that as our father, he disciplines us. And also from scripture, that discipline can be quite harsh, just like a stern father. But what happens when we add God's grace to his stern fathership? Stern father plus grace equals a concerned and caring father. While the heart of the statement is true that the Bible is not just filled with a bunch of do's and don'ts, there still are rather a lot of do's and don'ts. In the New Testament alone, the phrase do not appears 402 times. Add the more than 900 times it shows up in the Old Testament and you get a sense in which God is a stern father issuing tough warnings and commands that he expects to be obeyed. How many times as a parent did you say to your child, do not or don't do something, and they don't hear don't, so they go do it. If you said do it, they go do it too. I wonder how much we frustrate God when he says do not 1300 times hmm. but again if you stop here just at his saying do not all you see is the stern father and you'll be robbed of God's true heart of concern and compassion that is actually behind the warnings of do and don't Hebrews 12, verses 4 to 13, talks about how we all need discipline. Discipline comes from a stern but loving father. In verses 5 and 6, it says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Discipline shows we're part of a family, in verse 8. If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Interesting. Verse 10 says that discipline is for our own good and lets us share in God's holiness. I don't know about you, but when my dad was smacking me on the backside, when of course I didn't deserve it, but anyway. Well, I did. But I wasn't thinking holiness. But when God disciplines us, it says they, our earthly fathers, disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. Discipline can hurt. That is true. But it produces righteousness and peace. Verse 11 says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time. Yep, we get it. But painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. So here's what happens when God's grace is applied to his moral rules. These imperatives are still in the Bible, but when you understand them in the light of God's grace in Jesus, they take on a brand new meaning. As we saw in Hebrews 12, verses 6 to 8, it's clear that God is disciplining those he loves. He discipline, his discipline is grounded in his grace and his love for us. God's discipline is not the enemy. And it's not the opposite of grace. God deals with you as his child and he loves you with his grace. That's why he disciplines us. The stern father is also, and even more so, the concerned and caring father because of his amazing, unfailing, unending compassion and mercy. And so God is a merciful judge, a concerned and caring father, but he's also a silent creator. We don't always hear God for various reasons. 
which usually have something to do with our sin and not him. It has to do sometimes with our not trusting him. But what happens when we see God's grace added to his being a silent creator? Silent creator plus grace makes an intimate maker. Numerous times in the Psalms, David describes God as being silent or hiding or far off. There are times when God does not speak or act as we might predict. And as a result, he is seemingly silent. Though there are times God is this way. It can happen because of sin. More often than not sometimes. Sometimes prayers don't get answered quickly, so it seems like God's not answering them at all. Maybe a Bible reading gets dry. Maybe our service becomes weighty on our shoulders, like a chore. Maybe our fellowship doesn't seem to help. When life is like this, let me encourage you to keep obeying and trusting God, to keep praying, to keep reading the word, even if you're not seemingly getting much out of it, to keep serving, to keep fellowshipping with others, and above all, keep showing grace and then keep receiving grace you see when grace enters the picture even in silence there's still a powerful presence and a closeness of spirit in hebrews 4 14 and then verse 16 it says that jesus actually allows you to draw near with confidence something that was not available to david the writer says, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Don't allow momentary times of dryness or silence or spiritual depression to cause you to think that God is not present or that he doesn't love you. That is not true. Confidently, even in the dry times, confidently draw near to God's throne of grace. Do it in faith and receive mercy and help in your time of need. You see, back in Jesus' time, before he died on the cross for the salvation for us, the priest only went into the Holy of Holies behind the curtain once a year to pray for the people. He's the only one who could talk directly to God for them. Jesus came. And when he died on the cross and the earthquake happened and the sky darkened, that curtain in the Holy of Holies ripped down the middle from top to bottom. Now we're talking a couple of stories high that this curtain was. So no one could just go up there, even with a knife or a machete or something, and rip it down the middle. No, they could only rip from the bottom. But it says in Scripture that it ripped from the top. It ripped from heaven. God ripped it for us apart, open forever, that we could come in ourselves, you and me, personally, into the Holy of holies and we don't need to go into a temple to do it you can do it right where you're sitting right now at home on your couch in a chair in a lying in a bed or sitting with others in McGowan Lodge at Rod Voller Sunday wherever you are Mount Gravatt, Nambour, 
wherever you are, you can enter the Holy of Holies without moving a muscle with prayer. Don't allow moments of dryness and silence to stop you going in to the throne room of grace. Because faith sees God's face, even when it can't be seen. Faith says, I'll pray even though I don't know if you're listening, but I believe you are. Faith, because of grace, says, I'll serve even though I don't want to. Faith sees God's grace when it can't be seen. If the help doesn't seem to come on your timeline, stay there. The silent creator is realised and eventually felt as the intimate maker. So while it is only possible to come to God through Jesus Christ, it is also possible to only know him in part without ever really getting to know him if we haven't taken hold of that grace. So you can't really know God without knowing his grace. His grace has come to us in Jesus. His grace allows the righteous judge to also be the merciful judge. His grace allows the stern father to also be the caring, compassionate father and also the silent creator to also be the intimate maker. In your sin, in our sin, God didn't and doesn't owe us any of these things. But in his grace, he has given them anyway. When you embrace his grace, everything else about God that you have come to know goes from monochrome, black and white, to technicolor. Like when television all those years ago, most of you are too young to remember, changed from black and white to colour. Black and white to colour. And you'll say, I had no idea God was this awesome. It's grace. Grace changes Oh Lord our God, I think of the hymn where we say, Oh Lord our God, in awesome wonder, we look to you, we look at you, we look at what you've done for us, and we can't help but see your grace. And when we see your grace, we see that you aren't just a righteous judge, but a merciful judge, someone who paid the price for us. The stern father, who is also the caring and compassionate father, who doesn't just discipline us, but died for us. The silent creator, who is also that intimate maker, who hugs us to himself. Lord, if there is someone out there watching this today that is not, taken hold of that grace who's only done half the journey and Lord my prayer is that they would come to you today I accept your grace Jesus I want to be wholly yours 
Or maybe there's someone listening there, Lord, who knows you're working in their heart, showing them that they are in need of you, Lord, because they can't control their own lives. They want to give up that control because they're making a mess of it. And Lord, I pray that they would come to you today, that they would say, Lord, I realise I'm a sinner. And Lord, I confess that sin to you. I don't want to do that. I don't want this life to go on like it is. And so I confess it and I repent of it and I turn from it and I turn to you, Jesus Christ. And I both seek your forgiveness and receive it. Receiving your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for me. Now, Lord, be Lord of my life. Pray for those who prayed that prayer this morning. Maybe our souls are weary and we haven't sought your grace. Let us do it today. Because grace changes everything, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me read the words of this song to you. We're going to finish with today. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Now you may know only the chorus, or maybe thought there was only the chorus of this song, but there are verses that were written, and and this is why we're finishing with this song today. O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Saviour, and life more abundant and free. Through death into life everlasting. He passed and we follow him there, over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. And hear this before we sing it. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's worship now, turning our eyes upon Jesus in the light of his glory and grace. And then let the video run as we conclude.